Is it a gun that sucks balls? I'm the farting demon in this relationship. <laughs> I'd be an awesome rich person. You're both just an exactly. embarrassment. God, I'm awesome. Today. We're talking Tom Hanks and his vehicle. Yeah, I had my finger in my mouth waiting for you to finish. You gotta get four balls or something? Like dick piercing? <laughs> no, you know damn well I'm fucking that demon. It's still sexy. How could that be close and not be right? Yeah, I'll just kill some random dude. Wishes hey, everyone, and welcome to Plotty Time, the podcast where we three gamers discuss video game stories in detail with all the necessary and appropriate backlash. On one side of the table, we have Chump Slap. Not everyone is lucky enough to hold their great, 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 great grandfather's penis in their hands. I know I certainly would have liked to. <laughs> On the other side of the table is Dr. Scientist. I'd like to go back to a time when I could shit my pants and people wouldn't tell me I have an attitude problem. <laughs> <laughs> my, my name is Papa Scotch, and as I always say, if I were a farmer and Eddie Munster came in and started kicking my corn, <laughs> you could understand how I could be a bit upset. Do you understand the tables are my corn? <laughs> Welcome to Plotty Time. This week, we've got one thing for the correction crevice. Uh, we mentioned and we were confused about the timeline of when the last season of Supernatural aired. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It started October 8th, 2020 and was done before the conclusion of 2020. Oh. I know it was pretty quick. Yeah, but I could sleep better now. Yeah, now the fans, they I, we got a lot of letters about that. <laughs> a lot of letters. So, you know, those soup, those soup nets stands, they'll get you. Anyway, <laughs> let's move into our favorite segment of every week. What are we playing? What are we watching? What are we doing? And we'll start where we always start. Dr. Scientist, what's up with you? Not much. Still, well, still watching Grimm. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I broke down and paid the $5 to get Paramount Plus so I could watch Dr. Death. I thought you had it because of Star I, Trek. Well, Premium. Oh, what? Mm. Yeah. What's the difference? Oh, no, it's Peacock. That's what it was. Okay. It wasn't Paramount right. Plus. My bad. My bad. It was $5 for Peacock. But it, yeah, it was good. I mean, I don't think Joshua Jackson has been a, in a bad movie ever or a bad show. What was that one he was in about the super Fringe? secret organization? No, in college, the colleges that oh. like skulls or something. Uh, skulls, yeah. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about disturbing behavior. Or, Cruel Intentions, that's it. No. He, was in, he was in a movie like that. I don't remember exactly what it was. I'm trying to remember, was he in Cruel Intentions? Uh, it might have been Disturbing Behavior. Well, he was definitely in that. You know what? This okay. We're going to be here all day. <laughs> we're talking about, anyway, we're talking about 90s. Pacey's always good. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a true story of a doctor who wasn't a very good surgeon and killed a bunch of his patients and stuff. On purpose? Or just uh, they kind of leave that up to you to interpret. Oh. If he was just bad at his job or if he was doing it on purpose. Mm. Okay. Nice. But it's a true story and it happened. Uh, movies. I saw this one, I believe Chump Slap has mentioned, or if he didn't, I just dreamed it because it's something he'd watch. It was called Odd Thomas. Oh, yeah. That sounds odd. familiar. Doesn't it have uh, Christopher Lloyd in it? Well, that's a different one. That's a different one. This is Anton Yelchin. And uh, he can like see... He's kind of like psychic. He can see monsters running around when people are about to die. Oh, yeah. And he has to like pretend not to see them. Yeah. yeah. And then there's like a terrorist attack coming because there's a lot of them. He's trying to stop it. Mm-hmm. It's all right. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was interesting. He can like talk to dead people. Uh, I did see Shang Z and the Legend of the Ten Rings. How was in it? In the theater. It was really good. I would say of like the origin movies that they have, like the first ones, it was probably the best one. Really? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Not a I, I mean, movie. I haven't heard anything about it. Yeah. Uh, it just came out on Friday. Or two Fridays ago. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But uh yeah, I I kind of intrigued on where they're going after all the shows and this kind of sets up something that I'm not sure is done in the shows, so it's something else. But it's pretty good. Okay. I would recommend you, are, it. I don't want to spoil it too much. Is the plan, uh, is it to make like these, these, uh, I don't know how to say it, uh, these like s- the shows and stuff, is it to explain more story and get deeper into characters so that they don't have to make an Avengers like three hours long or two movies? I, or is it just ad- additional things? It's just more revenue. Well, the shows seem to be setting up like a bunch of stuff to happen after Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to ruin it for people who didn't see it because you didn't see any of them, but. No, not yet. They all kind of set up something yeah, just big so they in the can universe. Make the next so they make the next big crossover. Totally yeah. Yeah, I but it. this, the Shang-Z set up something I don't think had to do with any of them. It's interesting to see where they're going. 
it could lead right into the next movie that they're releasing, The Eternals. But well, who the hell knows, man? Yeah. They they make much more money to be better at it than I am. I am so. Yeah, I don't think we'd do a good Marvel movie. No, mostly because we don't know how to make movies. I, and I probably know the most about comics, and I don't know that much. So, <laughs> right, <laughs> that wouldn't be uh, that great. So I am looking this up, and Joshua Jackson was in Cruel Intentions. He played a guy by the name of Blaine Tuttle. Well, thank you. That solved. Oh yes, Blaine. We're not putting shit in the crevice. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're sorting it all out on air. But yeah, I'd like to see. I, they're getting really comic booky with the Marvel movies, so I like that. Just like cool, random magic and whatever. Uh, I did finish Close to the Sun for PlayStation. How was it? It was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't Bioshock, but but it was a it was a nice science fictiony story, walking sim type thing. Oh yes, yes. I read... how long did it take you? Like, what's the play play length? <sighs> Probably between seven to ten hours, eight to ten hours. Ah, so it's not like a. 50 hour epic no no 50 hours isn't even that much anymore yeah but who has that much time losers that's who yeah and uh i spent about 50 hours playing hades oh okay cool. <laughs> see there you go <laughs> no I, I didn't even spend 50 but i played it a lot it's, it's just a good roguelite uh anybody who likes roguelites at all should probably play it hmm. okay and that's i still am not 100 percent sure what a roguelite is but that really shouldn't surprise any of you guys no. at this point, right? Well, well, you'll figure it out just like you've eventually figured out in Metroidvania. Yeah, I'll get there eventually. Yeah. And Walking Sim took you a while, but you finally got it. It wasn't until I played one, <laughs> which I loved. It was uh, Everyone's Gone to Rapture. Yeah. Mm. So just play Rogue and you'll figure it out. Okay. I'll put it on the list. Yeah. Wh- why don't you tell us what you played and we'll see uh, if it was a roguelite at all or anything like that. Oh. Guess how many games of zombies I played? Three. Zero. Zero. Yes. Oh. I didn't even start up zombies. I got into Resident Evil 8. Nice, nice. Oh, you're just doing the fucking collectible yeah. run. I finished the collectible run. Oh, nice. And then I started the hardest difficulty run. And I got to the last, or the, there's like three boss fights that end the game. And they're pretty close to one another. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not really how it works. Like, at one point, you <laughs> you fight a boss, a big boss. Yeah. And then you play a sequence as a different character. And you go through a very difficult section, so it's almost like a second boss. It's difficult. And then after that is the main final boss boss. Mm. I'm at that first boss you have to beat, and I can't fucking beat it. Even with unlimited ammo? Well, it's you're not fighting it with your guns. You're fighting it with, like, a little mini tank thing. Because uh, these games are fucking stupid. Yeah, like, I was going to say, that sounds stupid. terrible. <laughs> it's like a it's like a doom buggy with a cannon and a <laughs> fucking <laughs> sounds awesome. chainsaw. It sounds like Borderlands. A little bit. It's a little insane. And you're fighting a big garbage monster, obviously. Wow. Wow. Spoiler. Yeah. I know. These games get ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, I tried to beat him like six times and got frustrated. And I'm like, I'll come back. Six? I was so, well, because I Coward. rolled through, steamrolled through everything else. I had infinite ammo. Yeah. So everything else was easy. I think I died like once or twice by accident because I didn't notice someone was behind me. Mm. Well, sometimes anyway. you just got to put it down and come back to yeah. it later. You'll probably beat it first try. Yep. I've, I can't tell you how many times I've done that. Yeah. Oh, me too. Right? We get so mad and freaked out and just so pissed and you walk away. And then the next day you're like, all right, I'm going to try it again. Whatever. Yeah, you're, like, you're like, oh, this is fucking impossible. I got to be doing something wrong. Let me see some videos. Yeah. That's a that's a feeling I got. I I watched some videos and I'm like, no, they're doing the same shit I am. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? And I guess I just got to give it another shot tomorrow. But that's mostly what I play. I still got to do my knife run, my knife only run, mm-hmm. and I still got to do my speed run. Don't we all? And then I got to do the mercenaries modes. So I got a couple more weeks of this game. I think. All right, good. It's mm-hmm. good to get your money's worth. So instead of playing zombies, you played zombies. Yeah, I. Uh, I guess. I mean, I honestly don't know what kind of monsters these things are. They're like vampire werewolves. Yeah. So there you go. Not zombies. Monsters. I guess still we're in the they're in the horror monster world. Halloween's coming up. You got to make it spooky. Oh. But uh, that's spoiler. that's all I really played. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a spoiler that Halloween's coming up? <laughs> Let's just get the the elephant out of the room. Mm-hmm. Supernatural. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Episodes remaining. Now, what would I say last week? 27? 20, that was two Something weeks like that. 
Two weeks ago was 26. I think last week was 18 yeah, or 16. Right. Doesn't matter because now I got fucking zero, guys, because I finished. Oh, no! thank Christ. I am so glad it's over. Are you going to start it over? <laughs> I'm going to give it like a week and I'll start it over. There's just going to be a TV in my home that plays Supernatural 24-7, <laughs> just rolls through it. So what as, It's going to be like in a hallway, so at like a chair next to it. So if you pass by, you're like, yeah, I'll, I'll check out this episode. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what did you think of 15 years of Supernatural? The, I mean, I uh, overall, I enjoyed it. If I didn't like it, I would have stopped mm-hmm. 10 seasons ago. <laughs> uh, but I think that you could have cut out... Like, if you're looking at the whole thing as one... TV shows are different. They release every year. They didn't know if they were getting released ha- or you know renewed half the time. Yeah. So they had to kind of keep making it. So maybe they could end the series by the end. And I just, if you're looking at it as a whole, I feel like they could have cut out like seven seasons of this show, and Fair. it would have been great. Fifteen. There were just moments and storylines that just went on too long and were just silly. It's it's the ridiculousness of a 22 season series anymore. Yeah, it's just eventually you just episodes. it gets silly. It just gets nuts. And yeah. I don't think that's their fault. It's just it's just the way 328 it goddamn episode premises. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is. But overall I enjoyed it. I would recommend it if you got 300 and fucking hours to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Have at it. But overall, sure. Thumb up, th- thumbs up. All right. And it's a shame we can't talk about what happened at the end, but... Yeah, spoiler. Yeah, what are you going to do? Although it's been almost a year. Let's put it to bed. 22. 2022. We'll, we'll talk about we'll, it. We'll send out a tweet to see if it's okay to spoil it. Yet. Very special episode next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just you Where two. we just talk about Supernatural <laughs> for 14 hours. Well, 15 hours. One hour for each season. <laughs> You'll have to watch it again, Dr. Scientist. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, but other than that, I watched uh, two Kolchak films. Have you heard of Kolchak? Is this a? Th- I've never heard of this. No, I've is never it like heard Magnum of it. PI. Mostly, yes. Wow. Kind of. It's like it's from the early seventies, right? <laughs> and there's there's this guy goes by the name Kolchak. Mm-hmm. He is a uh, that- investigative reporter who's a huge fucking asshole. Mm-hmm. And there's there were two movies that that were made first. They were like made for TV movies, and then. After those were successful, it got like a 20 episode season. I've only seen the first two movies, but it's about the premise is this guy's a reporter. He goes to investigate a story of homicide. It looks like some kind of monster. Okay. Everyone thinks he's a fucking psycho and insane, and they, they're not going to print this garbage. A lot of yelling in the newsroom type stuff. Nice. And then it turns out he's right, and it's always a monster. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like X Files. Sort of. But at least the X-Files program was FBI sanctioned, you know? <laughs> this was just a reporter like, guys, it's a fucking vampire. Like, all the victims have no blood in their neck, you know? They have, and, and, like, every sign forever pointed to vampire. And then he goes to, like, print the story, and they sh- the cops shut it down. And they're like, what do you mean you're shutting it down? It's clearly a vampire. They're like, we're not printing. It's a goddamn vampire. <laughs> and then by the end, it turns out it's a goddamn vampire. Nice. So they eventually print it? He, I guess, spoiler, if you don't want to see something for 1972. <laughs> it's not but it is pretty. Yet. It's It's great. It's pretty great. And the he, the first one's in Vegas, and he has his final story. He just killed the vampire himself because no one believed him. Because, you know, he's always the first guy at the scene because he knows people, right? Yeah. Like street level. Yeah. And, yeah, a lot of, lot of cliches in this one. <laughs> well, that's where they started. It might be. I don't know. But... He he gets to this house. He kills the vampire with the chief of police. So the chief of police sees this all, right? Makes and sense. And then he writes this story. He hands it in. And then the police are like, you're going to leave town now. Here's our arrest warrant. We're going to put you away for murdering this guy. I was going to say, you can't. they just arrest you for killing a vampire? Because that's still murder. That was kind of like what they did. They were going to arrest him if he didn't literally pick up his shit and literally leave town that minute. Huh. And he's like, what about my girlfriend? Like, yeah, we talked to her. She ain't coming. So, fuck off. <laughs> so he goes to Seattle, and that's the second movie. He's in Seattle. Well, that sounds pretty fun. By the end, he gets fucking run out of that town too. It's fun, like it's silly, but it's pretty fun. the The guy who plays Kolchak, I don't have his name in front of me, Joshua but Jackson. he uh, he was Billy Madison's dad. <laughs> really? <laughs> so nice. I watched that movie completely different. And then the last thing I watched, if you got, guys, go check it out. Cold Check, The Night Stalker and The Night Strangler. <laughs> Pretty great. All right. 
Also watched a movie I don't remember if we talked about it at all, The Cleansing Hour. Oh, yeah, I told, I said that. I saw that one. Okay, what did you think of it? I, I, it was entertaining. It was different. I yeah I didn't love it but I thought it was I thought it was pretty good yeah it's a nice what little it was. twist on everything oh, and it had that yeah, dude from uh, Westchester in it oh yeah oh god what's that guy's name no idea he was in we talked about him twice he's the dude that was in that World War II ghost movie oh yeah oh uh, okay I don't remember his name so what's this movie about Kyle Gallner there it is uh, it's about a YouTube channel where there's a priest. Doing uh, exorcisms. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then, basically, you know, the camera goes out. It's all a fucking act, obviously. And then one time they actually get a demon to inhabit the actor. Okay. They don't do it. It just does. And they're like, what do you want? And the demon's like, dude, you fuck around with this stuff enough? This is going to happen. Sounds familiar. And then spooky shit happens. Nice. It's yeah, not bad. Crazy spooky shit. Yeah, crazy shit. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fine. Yeah, it's fine. All right. It's not a waste of time. No. That's good. But uh, what about you, Sir Chumpslap? What are you playing, watching, doing? What's going on with you? Well, I uh, finished Super Liminal. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy it? Yeah, it's really good. Puzzles are... Best game you played this year so far? Very satisfying. It's not Dude, so it's not the best game you played. (laughs) Yeah, I guess you're right. (laughs) So it's number two. Right, it's really good though. Definitely right. give it a shot. Played some more uh, Metro Exodus. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. You're still doing that, huh? Yeah, it's still fun. Okay. It's still like Fallout Light doesn't have fucking stats and shit. You don't gain experience. And you get killed by things you don't see. Yeah, it's not that bad. There's no karma system. No, nothing. I think you can help save people or or kill them. I don't know. I've been trying to save people. But I just got to this part where I f- fell off a cliff into a river, starting a new spot with no- none of my gear, <sighs> find new different type of weapons. It's Bingo pretty fun. Spot. Yeah, it's pretty good. Mm. Okay. Give it a look. Is it still in Russia? Yeah, you're still just cruising on a fucking train track, which I don't know how the train tracks survived this whole thing. But Yeah, Russia's pretty big, so I guess they can go. From... But yeah, that's a good game. All right. Uh, watch the first episodes of the new season of What We Do in the Shadows. Oh, yeah? Oh, I saw those too. I forgot about that. Yeah, it's it's, it's good. Just like, still fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how they had Guillermo captured in the basement. <laughs> but there was like a piece of the cage that just opened up and he'd get out and just start doing like the <laughs> chores and stuff. That was so good. It was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Well, I watched a couple of movies if you guys want to hear it. Sure. I mean, I've got time. Yeah, what do you got? I watched this movie called The Tangle. Oh, I saw that one too. Yeah. I'm unfamiliar with it. It's about this the future where the world's all connected through kind of like a matrix thing. Sort of, yeah. Through. But they're like tiny nanobots all throughout the world, so everyone just gets automatically connected. It's kind of like a virus of nanobots that... Yeah, that make you not be able to commit acts of violence and shit. Okay. And then there's a then there's a murder and they oh, and they have to try to figure out who did who done it. I enjoyed cool. it. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it was different. It was fun. Yeah. I mean, it starts off really strong with the interrogation of that guy where he just has to keep repeating it. Yeah, oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. <laughs> no, it was 6 times start over. It's like how many sips do you take? I don't know, 4. It was 7. <laughs> <laughs> We have you on the tangle. Yeah. We know exactly what you did. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, I watched a brand new Cherry Flavor. Oh, yeah. How was that? It's good. I've been meaning to it's watch that. It's slappy as hell, man. I told you. I told you it slaps. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it slapped a lot harder than I thought. Because I was like, the, like, the first two episodes, I'm like, oh, that's it. That's what he's talking about, slapping. And then it's like, oh. Shit gets wild. Yeah, I don't want to say the thing because it's so shocking when it happens, but the thing she keeps doing. Oh, when she. Spoiler. I don't know. 
Oh, the thing that she's like, I don't want to do that anymore. And then, yeah, exactly. Yes, that episode is so fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that is gnarly as hell. If you guys want something fucking weird, yeah, go watch Brand New Cherry Flavor. It is weird. Yeah, it's damn damn good. I'll definitely. Get but it's it. it's not like it's weird. It's strange. It's crazy. It's a little spooky. But it's not like it just stops just short of where it's like David Lynch weird, where you don't even know what's happening anymore. Yeah, it actually like, like there's makes a narrative. Sense like you get it. it. Yeah, there's a story. Yeah, it's just crazy shit happens. Yeah, crazy shit happens in that story, but <laughs> it still makes sense. Motivations are clear. I loved it. I thought. Yeah, it was I, didn't, I didn't, wasn't a big fan of the ending though. I mean, it was no. It's kind of lackluster, but it, it opens it up for a whole another season or whatever if they do it again. I hope they do. It was just marketed as a limited series. Yeah, exactly. But I don't know if there's going to be more of it or if this is it or. Yeah, I don't know if a lot of people are going to like it just because we're fucking weirdos. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It, there's going to be people that fucking hate it, I'm sure. Oh, but yeah. It also had, uh, what's his name? The dude from The Good Place, Jason. Yeah, he was good. He was great. Meth head. <laughs> he didn't just talk about Florida the whole time. <laughs> this is great. They said that Blake Bortles was a stupid name, but Blake Bortles is an awesome name. <laughs> I think that's the third time you've done this quote on the this podcast. <laughs> really? I don't regret it at all. Because <laughs> it's great. Yeah, why would you? So that one should have been in the slap pocket, but it was. Well, it was. It was slappy as shit. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't a slap of the week. <laughs> Well, what could be? <laughs> Come true. C U M true? <laughs> no. Oh. Oh, uh, okay. All right. I'm gonna guess. Go oh, you go first. It's your turn, Doctor Side. It's about a ten year old kid who makes a birthday wish, and then everything he wishes for comes true. I'm gonna say it's a sequel to Kazam, and Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, grants the wish that turns out to be a witch's curse. You are just making random stuff up now. <laughs> yeah, no shit. That's not what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, seriously. No, it's about this this girl who goes into a sleep study, and it turns out that the doctors are trying to like see your dreams with this study. So like they put this thing on your head, and like whatever you see, they're supposed to be able to see. And turns oh, out man. everyone sees this like shadowy figure. It turns into like a fucking sleep paralysis type thing. And it takes a wild fucking left turn at the end. I've seen that. Maybe. There, there, yeah, there's, I think so. That stupid ending where I kind of like the ending. She gets a text. Yeah. Yeah. And you get, like, I swear weird... I've seen that before somewhere. Unless I'm thinking about the other movie that's exactly like it where you have weird shit in your eyes. and I don't know if she has weird shit in her eyes. Like your eyes turn like... They get like two pupils in them. No, it's not that. Oh, one. maybe we're just thinking about another movie that's exactly the same as that. I mean, speaking <laughs> of weird shit in your eyes, how about when they, that guy has his eye fixed in brand new cherry flavor? <laughs> You'll probably, oh, yeah. Scientists will hate that. <laughs> I won't watch it. <laughs> yeah, it just, it's only one, one little section. but Yeah, but it's just, it was a wild movie. And I don't know. It doesn't really make sense. That's why it slaps. There you go. <laughs> so check it out. And then if you've seen that ending before, let me know where you saw it because I swear to God I've seen it before. Yeah, no, I haven't seen Come True. I've seen, I've seen another movie like that about sleep paralysis. And- oh, yeah. About a couple weeks. Yeah. I don't know when. I, I watched like three or four sleep paralysis movies. It's weird. That's a fucking wild theme. I know. It's, it's a Are good, there that many of them? It's a good start for There's pretty many. A horror idea. But then, of course, too many people do it and it's like, eh. Yeah, and everyone's like, yeah, everyone, it happens to everybody once in a while. I'm like, I don't know anybody that's happened to. I, I know someone who has it pretty regularly. Yeah, I think he said that last time. Probably. <laughs> she was never happy about it. It doesn't seem like a pleasant experience. No, no. no uh, my girlfriend gets it once in a while. Yeah. And she, uh, she got it at my place, and she said that uh, the, the big barometer, it, she said in the moment when she's like, you know, half awake, half dreaming, it feels very real. But her barometer is the dogs. If they're still asleep, then it's not real. Oh, that makes sense. But the dogs. So that's how she oh, okay. deals with it. Oh, fair. Yeah, like if someone was walked into the room, the dogs would lose their goddamn minds. What if it was an alien? 
Or maybe, an apparition. A, could be a ghost. I don't know. Who does know? Anyways, <laughs> that is the slapper of the week. Come true. Check it out. So, how about we get into video game news slash stuff? Ooh. Oh, what you got here? I'm not doing it. Extra, extra. There you go. Um, I really don't have terribly much in video game news this week. Uh, there was supposedly a rumor, because I guess we're starting with rumors, because I have them written down on my sheet, that there's a potential infamous project getting announced soon. Mm. I hope it's not a remake of the first one. Probably will be. I hope not. Yeah, either. probably. But uh, apparently, it's coming from a couple com- like sources, but no one has any proof. It's just rumor. It's it's a rumor. It's a rumor. It's mm. what people heard. Oh, get your hopes up, guys. They really got nothing. Uh, I also saw, I don't know if you guys saw this too, but they did a live stream. EA Sports did a live stream with a little bit of the Dead Space remake. Oh, yeah. They actually played gameplay of an early alpha. Like, things are very much not done. Mm-hmm. But uh, they were like, here's what the game looks like. This is compared. They even compared it on their live stream. Like, this is what it looks like versus the old one. Looks pretty rad, huh? And I thought it was really cool that they did that. That they're like, yeah, the game's not done. It's, it's not going to be done for a minute. And So it's like beat for beat remake. That's what they said. They're also going to restore some things that uh, were cut from the original game for time or money. Oh, that's fair. But I can't imagine that they're doing this much work for a series that they stop doing if they don't plan to make more. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, this is a capitalist society. Yeah, it's just cash grab, dude. To see how, like, if this sells well, are they going to remake the second one or are they going to make a new one? They'll remake the second one. Maybe. I mean, that's what <laughs> yeah. they did with Resident Evil, although they were also making new ones. But uh, the other thing they did mention, one of the big things, is that they're bringing back the original voice actor from the first Dead Space, or from Dead Space to do voices. But if you guys remember, Dead Space 1 had no voice. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought it was a silent protagonist in the first one. Well, he did do grunts and stuff, didn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shit like that. Maybe. So I don't know. Maybe they're going to add like a narrative and or change it around or make it completely different. I don't know. Make it spooky. Yeah, I guess we'll find out, guys. Uh, anyway, so as far as news goes, there's also a rumor that an Alan Wake remaster is going to be reported or has been reportedly leaked. Uh, supposedly, it's going to release October fifth, twenty twenty one. Well, if you played the last DLC of the Control, you probably expected that. Oh yes, Alan Wake, nightmares. Ooh, scary. <laughs> I kind of want to play it. I mean, it looks spooky. I don't know what Alan Wake is. is it- oh, wait a minute. I think I own it. We'll have to do it one time. I guess so. I think I own it. It's I think it's the long. only game I own for my Xbox 360 that I haven't turned on in at least seven or eight years. The only Yeah, I just gave mine away the other day. The only <laughs> thing I, was thinking about it. I know about it is what I got from the Control DLC. Yeah, it's scary. Isn't it supposed to be like a horror? Like you walk around with a flashlight. Yeah, it's like it's kind of like Silent Hill type. Yeah, yeah. I, everyone I know who's played it has says it's great. Uh, has says everyone <laughs> I know who has played it has said it is great. All right. I don't know anybody who's played it actually. You don't know that many people. That's true too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, last piece of news I have is: uh, Did you guys hear about this Horizon Forbidden West yep. debacle that went? Oh on? no, the debacle. Oh what? They're making you pay for the upgrade now. Yeah, they came out with news saying that the upgrade will not be free. So you either need to buy it for PS4 or buy it for PS5. And then within a few hours, they reversed that. Oh, wow. Classic so now they're saying like, yeah, OnlyFans um, shit. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're telling me people are going to be mad if they have to pay for the same thing twice? If we already told them it was going to be free? Well, I mean. This is crazy. Why don't you just buy the version you need? That's also a great question. It's not like. It's not like you're going to play it on both unless you're right. doing some stupid trophy shit. And then you deserve to pay for it twice. Yes, agreed. <laughs> That's exactly what I was just going to say. Fair. Or even $10 to upgrade. No. You know, people are spoiled. Not if you promised me it was going to be a free upgrade. That's like fucking saying Cyberpunk's going to come back and say, I owe him 10 more dollars to play the PS5 version. I don't think so. You, you didn't, didn't even, even t- Yeah, you didn't try it. it. I know. I put it on the wall. Can you even get it on the PlayStation Store anymore? Yeah, I think they, they put back it back up? with back warnings up. and shit. Yeah, I believe we talked about that. They patched it to the point where it's acceptable to play, I guess. 
I'm going to play it one day. That was not the case when I played it. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. Dude, your game is broken if if me as the player can sense when it's about to crash. <laughs> Yeah. Then, yeah. like, because the music you'd be, you'd get the fight music, mm. the same track over and over, which I can, I still hear <laughs> in my face. In your uh, sleep paralysis nightmares. Yeah, it's like, that's how it goes. Nice. Just in a loop. And, like, if you were fighting someone and you killed them very fast, then the music would just keep playing. <laughs> and like you just get in the fucking car and it's still playing You're like all right this is gonna crash real soon i should say it. oh amazing that's some yeah. damn good work exactly anyway that's all we got for video game news slash stuff how about we get into the game how does that sound? oh shit i forgot we had a game to do oh i thought we were done <laughs> So we're we're excited about it. We're excited about talking about this game. <laughs> I, I was pretty stoked. It was a good video. A lot of murdering. It was because this is the game where we ask the question: How many different ways can you kill someone with a hammer? <laughs> Not as many as a crowbar. We, of course, are talking about Manhunt Two. Of course. Whoa, controversial. It was released October 29th, two thousand seven, for PlayStation Two, PSP, and Wii. PSP. For some reason. Hmm. Yeah. We. Developed by <laughs> Rockstar London and published by Rockstar Games. It is a stealth survival horror murder simulator written by Charlie Boucher, Christian Cantamessa, and John Zerhelen. Uh Number one song on October 29th, 2007. You guys have a guess? Drake. No idea. Was Drake I don't out there in 2007? I don't know. I have no idea. The answer is Crank That Soldier Boy by Soldier Boy. How's his uh, game console coming along? <laughs> it's it's more readily available than a PS5. Oh! <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Burn. Hide your children. Hide them. <laughs> it's violent. Papa Scotch isn't it. pulling any punches today. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely shit. not. We're going to get... Oh, yeah. Sony, they're, they're going to come right after us. So the uh, number, <laughs> number one movie, October 29th, 2007. You know it's got to be a scary movie. Saw 3. It is Saw 4. Oh. Very close. Very good. And I don't have a price of a gallon of milk or anything, so I'm just going to do this day in history. Ooh. Okay. On October 29th, 1682, William Penn was granted a large portion of the New World from King Charles II that would later be called Pennsylvania. Penn's Woods. Oh, isn't that cute? That is what happened in 1682. The greatest state in the union. What? What? Give it up oh, for shit, PA. I got nothing. Sorry. Anyway, so. <laughs> Sir Chop Slap, mm-hmm. you picked this game. Of course. It How did. about you tell us what it's all about? It's all about murdering. Whoa. He's not wrong. That's it, pretty much. You play as one Dr. Lamb. He's- Daniel Lamb? Well, I believe he's a doctor, too. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Daniel Lamb, all right? <laughs> Jeez. I'm Easy. Not you just started. Dr. Daniel Scientist over here. But Daniel Lamb, he's got amnesia or partial, and he's a mental patient in Cottonmouth City. Sweet. And takes place in 2007 at the Dixmore Asylum. That is... I. What, oh. You read that and you're like, why? <laughs> Why would you name it that unless you're trying to be stupid? It's the name of the county. <laughs> you could have picked any other county. From the last game, we know that Manhunt takes place in the same universe as Grand Theft Auto. That's true. So naming something Dixmore does not surprise me at all. Mm-mm. Not in this universe. Not in the Grand Theft Auto universe. Yeah, you're right. Well, anyway, it starts out... Dixmore Asylum. You just like saying Dixmore. Dixmore Asylum <laughs> has a power outage <laughs> and all the cell doors open and all the patients make an escape. They're all just fucking around, beating I, the shit out of people. I got to say, that's pretty poor planning on the people who designed it, that when the power goes out, the doors open. That's a great point. Yeah. Maybe the power outage was just a cover. The, Do you think? The doors opening was the work of somebody else. 
Well, either way. They don't really go into it. No. Either way, the, the patients at Dick's Moore are running yeah, wild. Your, your classic psychopath, crazy people. Mm-hmm. So they're just beating the shit out of people, killing the workers there and such. And you run into Leo Casper, a psycho assassin. And he's going to guide you through. He's going to tell you what you're doing. He's like, fucking let's go this way, yada, yada. Got to kill that guy. Shit like that. He knows his way out pretty well. Yeah, he knows a lot. Apparently, he's been in there before. Who knows? I thought at first that he was the dude from the first game. Oh. But he he wasn't. He's just some crazy yeah, murderer Yeah, he's just guy. like the biggest serial killer in history in this world or some shit. In the Grand Theft Auto universe? That is wild. <laughs> well, I don't know. If there were, he, he's one of the craziest. And he's really good at what he does, apparently. I guess so. I'm just thinking about if it's the same universe, that means the three protagonists from Grand Theft Auto V like, don't even come close. And I've killed thousands of people in that game. Yeah, well, this guy kills a whole lot this game. So. <laughs> he sure does. Tell us about it. You follow him around. He's make your escape. He's like, Yo, let's get on this fucking garbage truck and get the hell out of here. So you kill a bunch of people. You get on the truck. And you get out. It's weird that the power goes out, but the garbage is like, yeah, we'll just pick up the garbage like normal. I know. It's like a big <laughs> thunderstorm or shit. It yeah. must have sucked. So you get out and you're like, oh, I got to get back to my place. And then Leo tells you, yeah, you left something there for yourself. Something that's going to help you out on this whole trip. So you're like, all right, let's get back. So you get back. He also says something like, the project's not going to stop until they catch you. Well, yeah. Something weird like that. Yeah, people are coming after you. He's talking about the project. You get to your place, and there's these guys in black suits called watchdogs. And They're just like government men in black style dudes, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I got from it. So you take out a whole bunch of them very gruesomely. And I got to just say, these are like quick time event murders, and they're all different, I believe. Well, there might have been one or two doubles, but in the video I watched, like everyone was different. I mean, either way, there's a lot of murder variety in this game. Oh, yeah. It goes out of its way just to do stupid shit. And there's, like, environmental ones, too. Yeah, like, slam someone's face into a toilet over and over again. Shit like that. Classic exactly. murder or kill. So you get you get into your house, and you left something there. It's a drug to clear your head a little bit. So you take it, and then there's talk of the project. Blah, blah, blah. And then you find a matchbook. And you're like, what the hell? I had to lift this matchbook here to give myself another clue. So you look at the matchbook, and it's from some club. And you're like, all right, we got to go there. That's got, that's got to be the next clue. So you make your way to the club. And the whole time, Leo's like, dude, don't do it. Let's fucking get out of here, man. They're going to keep coming after you, and they know you, they know you know about the club. So I, I got to say, he really hypes up this club as like a depraved thing. But when you get in there, yeah. it's not that bad. Well, it's pretty clean. Yeah. Nobody's even in there. It's just one. Yeah, just one one lady dancing. Yeah. And she's not even naked. No. It's a pretty classy place, actually. <laughs> if, if you think the project is bad, you wait till you fuck around with the health department. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, got to keep those floors and stages clean. So you go in there. Uh, apparently, a group called The Pervs runs it. <laughs> Great. Yeah, it's great stuff. Genius, uh, you go and you, you just start killing people because you're like, "Fuck, I need to find these answers." Kill, 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 and they're like, "If you really want to get depraved, go into the basement." So you kill a guy, take his head, use it as a puppet, and go to the basement door. And when they open it, you just use it like, "Hi, this is me. I'm going into the basement." That was that was a nice touch. <laughs> that, was, so. that was a fun moment. <laughs> Holding up the server. Oh, Bob, how are you? Like, he doesn't notice the guy's not emoting. Yeah. It was <laughs> genius. It was genius. Yeah, it's good stuff. So, right on par with yeah. what I would think. So you go into this S&M dungeon thing. But it's not really. I guess it's just a murder dungeon, right? Yeah, I don't think it's for, like, pleasure. They're just murdering people and turning them into zombies. Yeah. So you Not fl- literal zombies, people they can control. There you go. So you find this nurse lady who's there. And you're talking to her. She's like, oh, just leave me alone. Here, take this key. It's to a safe house. 
above the cinema. So you're like, all right, that's got to be a clue. Why the hell would this lady give me a key if it's not a clue? So you make your way out there. Leo's like, dude, bad idea. You shouldn't listen to that bitch. She's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But you're like, uh-uh. I'm the one who's losing my memory. I'm the one who wants to figure this shit out. So you murder your way into the cinema. And boom. Six years earlier. Oh, you find a picture of you and Michael. And you're like, what the? <gasps> Flashback six years earlier. Your friend Michael's trying to turn you in. And all hell breaks loose. You need to get a boat key from him. So you, Leo ends up killing him. You get the blah, blah, blah. Back to present time. You find a gun under the bed in the safe house. So you're like, all right. Sure. And a picture of that nurse. So you're like, shit, we got to go back. We got to find this nurse again. Yeah, wasn't it something like uh, she knows more than she said? Like, we got to go. Yeah, she knows more. She's letting on. Have a chat with her. Like, why would she give you that key that gives you this information? I don't know. Some reason you don't go back to the original club. You're back to... An empty porn theater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just really bad porn, and it, it's totally empty. Why are they even showing it? I don't know. <laughs> I just, I thought it was great that they're like, you need to go to the cinema. The, the apartment's above the cinema. I thought they meant like, oh, a movie theater or like an art house project or something. No, the porn Shows fancy cinema. movies. Like, no, the, the porn shop, the porn theater. <laughs> the cinema. Ooh. Ooh. How fancy, right? Cinema with an S. Get it? Oh, uh, yeah, well, I'll see my way out. Fuck, I quit the podcast. After that, I have, it's a dream sequence of Danny and his wife talking. And he's like, I'm going to do this experiment because we need the money. And it's it's fine. I'm, part, I'm a major part in it. It's going to be cool. It's only going to turn me psycho for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, okay, what the hell is that all about? But then you find Nurse Judy, and she's talking about Pikmin, and she says, don't trust Leo, man. He's he's the bad fucking apple. I know he says it about me, but he's the one. Also, they're, they're pitting you against Leo. Yes. Judy's like, I think she tells you to find Pikmin. Or she's like, yo, remember Pikmin? Come on, man. He's the scientist who's... In charge of the experiment? Yeah, it was something about Pikmin. I did because I didn't know if they were talking about a person or what at this point. Yeah. Because they were just like, remember Pikmin? Remember Pikmin? Yeah. Doesn't really go into it yet. But once she's talking to you, all of a sudden, boom, she's shot in the face, falls off a roof, and it's an ambush. So you just run away from it. You're like, fuck this. I'm not killing all these people. Which is stupid because you've killed so many people already. Yeah, but these were a lot of people at once and they had the upper hand. <laughs> you don't get it. Scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to science. Yeah. <laughs> and here comes another six years ago where you're destroying the records of the project and your previous life and you burn the whole f- all these records so nobody can tell it was you or knows anything about the project. So you can make a clean getaway. And this, this is where you find out that Pikmin was the head scientist of the project. And something happens with TVMK station where it's all this brainwash shit. Mm -hmm. And I believe at this station, Pikmin's there, right? Yeah. And he says something over like the PA system and you just immediately fall into a coma. It's like a verbally induced coma. I thought he injected you with something. Well, hypnosis. Did he? I thought that was a flashback you were injected. Oh, maybe. Maybe. I don't remember. I I got a little confusing at parts. Yeah. You couldn't tell what was flashback. You had to look at their clothes. Is this when they got to the gas station? Or I'm a little ahead. But they kept doing that where they would like be at a location, then have a flashback at that location, and then you play through that location. Yeah, yeah. It was so it's very confusing of, of what time I was in. Yeah. So you come to in a, in a room and kill your way out like you always do. And there's Pikmin tied up in the middle of the fucking TV station. Well, that's interesting. And he's talking... He's talking some shit. What? I was just saying, that's interesting. Yeah, it was strange. Who tied him up? Must have been Leo. Mm. He's talking about this Pikmin Bridge thing. And you're like, what the fuck is that, man? What's this Pikmin Bridge? Why am I fucking 
losing my mind all the time? Why do I get covered in blood and not remember anything that happened? I don't know. It's such a mystery. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> so Leo's there. He's like, oh, let's fucking kill him, kill him, whatever. And he uses the hypnosis phrase. And before it could work, he gets stabbed to death by Leo. Ruh, ruh. Yep. Pickman's like, you dick. I was going to help him. So now you find that Dr. White was also part of this, the project. And now she's the only one left alive that can help you or tell you anything about it. So you're like, we got to go fucking find her. Went on your way to find her. You get knocked out. And you Maybe wait. that's what I was confusing it with. What? When you get knocked out? Yeah. Yeah, this is when you get injected. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and you wake up in a white room with her sitting there talking to you. If I had a nickel. And this is where right. it all comes. They explain everything. Just fits like fucking puzzle pieces. Yeah, bro, tell us about it. Not puzzle pieces that fit together, though. <laughs> Just a couple squares. Yeah. She talks about the Pikmin Bridge. It's an implant that would contain the personality of a trained assassin that could be turned on or off to create remote assassins that wouldn't remember anything about what happened. Sort of Manchurian candidate That Yeah, exactly like that. Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh, that must be what this experiment was. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you're... Turns out you were a major scientist in this experiment. You're high up, like second in command or some shit. And they didn't have, it was going to fail, so that you decided to be the guinea pig to try to get money to make sure it worked. Yeah, she's like, you can stop Leo because he's the other personality. He's not even real. Yeah. You can just fucking turn him off. You got to fight him hard. We can fix this broken bridge. Yeah, we can't take it out. Because that would kill you, I think she says. But Did you guys know immediately that Leo wasn't real? Uh, no, not in like the first in, 10 seconds, but no. it took about five yeah. minutes. Yeah, I assumed it very quickly. Cause, well, I, I, it's what either that or... Because Leo never ever talks to anybody. Yeah, and he, he's never there when you're killing people. He kills people. Yeah, that's Leo. Yeah, that's what I said. He's there. <laughs> 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 Who tied up the doctor? Well, Leo. But, Daniel did, but But if as you were in a Leo. coma, when he was under hypnosis, he could just switch to Leo, and Leo wasn't under hypnosis, is what you're telling me. Yeah, Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, he has another like personality that. that makes him black out. Yeah, so. that's true. Okay. All right, I'll buy it. So you flash back, and this is where you find out how the project went so horribly wrong. Well. Well, yeah, besides <laughs> making you a psycho killer. Yeah. Right, yes. It's so a flashback. You, your wife... And you kill your wife as Leo. And you're like, what? Well, Leo, Leo goes on a rampage and yeah. wants to ruin your whole life. Yeah, he's just like, fuck, I'm going to take over your life, kill everybody. Mm-hmm. And you're like, no, no. And then you watch a video of you killing your wife brutally. Which is weird yeah. that they have video of it. Well, it, he was the experiment. Oh, yeah, I guess so. So they're like, all right, well, before any of this, we're putting cameras everywhere and see what happens. Just in case he kills someone. Yeah, because it's probably fucking very good possibility. Yeah, what did he think he was volunteering for? He thought he was going to be an assassin, but the bridge kind of malfunctioned. Yeah, the bridge malfunctioned, yeah. and they couldn't turn it off. And they kind of like started leaking Leo into his normal personality. Yeah, and Leo started getting stronger and stronger. You know, kind of like Fight Club. Yeah, and he did it for money. He said, yeah. you know, we'll be financially set no matter what, as long as I say okay to this. Yeah, because... Let's come back now. Let's come back. Otherwise, the project would have failed because nobody they couldn't get volunteers to do it or something like that. So they're evil enough to put cameras into his home to see how he reacts, but not evil enough to get, like, I don't know, some guy off the street and pay him a bunch of money to try it? He volunteered because he was part of it, though. Eh. And he figured, oh, this is this will get rid of all my gambling debt. They're not going to actually make me kill anyone. Yeah, and if they do, I'll just, they'll keep me chained up. Why they didn't keep him chained up the whole time or anything doesn't make sense to me either. Good question. Like, why'd they even let him back in his house? Yeah, at what point did they realize the bridge failed when he killed his wife? I imagine, <laughs> I imagine I when so. he went on the killing spree. Yeah, maybe yeah. he just, he was normal until he just got home and he just snapped. I don't know. Story as old as time. 
So basically, you're not implanting a super great assassin. You're implanting a complete psycho that you want to be able to turn on and off. I think that was a like a, a mistake error on their part. <laughs> yeah. Like why not like a a sniper or a yeah, like a like a green beret or yeah. some shit. Yeah, I think that might have been their intention, but uh, didn't work out that way. Obviously, yeah, maybe. It- Turn Leo into crazy. Who knows? Because he was supposed to Man. be like just an assassin, right? Yeah, yeah. Like a an assassin who, if captured, like wouldn't be able to give up anybody or any information. Yeah, because he wouldn't know anything. Yeah, because he could just turn it off and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well. Which is also dumb, but anyway. Yeah, I did mean it. Just makes the person get shot sooner. But okay, so now. White's like, I'm going to put you in this coma or some type of hypnosis, and you're going to have to beat Leo out of your own head. So you go into a dreamlike state where you fight everyone you've killed before. And Leo's just talking to you. He's like, yeah, take that. Remember killing this guy? Remember killing this guy? Because you don't remember. So he's just like making fun of you. But now you have to kill him. It took me a second in the cutscene movie to understand that this wasn't real life. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah like because yeah. he just showed up at the wayward pines place and you're like what's going on what is it this is this is real isn't it and you're like, oh wait no it's not because he murders everyone he's already murdered yeah so he kills everyone and then he goes to bury his wife and be like here if i bury you that'll help close the book on this yeah, whole really, thing leave my grief yeah and then he kills leo and then he wakes up in the middle of nowhere on a road and he's got a little note that says, you're David Jorner. This is your address. Don't you think that would be weird to wake up and like, would you why actually- Why is that note there? <laughs> yeah, why would you trust the note? I'd still go to that address, but I mean, what else are you going to do? Because he had total amnesia at that point, I believe. Right? I could go back to high school. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't remember. Yeah, it like erased both personalities. Mm-hmm. Which doesn't really make much sense. No. Unless they just wanted him to forget everything about it. but Well, they had to give him that address because they probably have that fucking bugged and cammed up in case he goes crazy again. But I think you have a good point there. Like, what else are you going to do? Yeah. This is the other thing I don't really understand about amnesia. Like, you can't remember anything, but somehow you have, like, what is it, like, muscle memory and motor functions and you know how to sneeze? Well, like, I don't know. It depends on the amnesia, but sometimes you can remember, like, skills and stuff, but you just can't sometimes remember Sometimes you can't remember how to talk or anything. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's different. Maybe. I don't Did know. you say breathe? You said motor functions. Me? Yeah. Like you, you thought it was weird that with amnesia you can remember to breathe? No, no, no. I, th- I thought it was weird that like you can remember basic skills and like muscle memory. Yeah. But you'd forget all your memories of like your events or other people. You know, like some things are automatic, yeah. like, I don't know, walking, talking, breathing. Yeah. Like where's the cutoff of me not remembering how to do things? Like I all like... I don't remember two weeks ago, but I do remember that I need to put pants on my legs to go outside. Yeah, and, and I still remember I could probably play Borderlands 2 again almost flawlessly. Yeah, probably. You probably remember the story somehow. That stuck because you played it 700 times. Yeah, I couldn't even tell you what I did yesterday, honestly. I don't know. I'm not a neuroscientist. We'll, like, have, to invite, we'll have to invite one on the show. Like Daniel here or White. I mean, it's, it's only a passing passion for me. I don't know too much about it. I'm no Pikmin. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> no Pikmin. <laughs> well, if you're out there an, an amnesia expert, hit us up. Yeah, let us know. I'd love to make an episode where you just pick the mind of a Pikmin. Yeah, and then we explain our normal days, and they're like, if you can't remember that, you guys all have a problem. Yeah. No, they probably say something scientific like, well, that's a like, repetitive yeah. amnesia. You just forget things you do every day. It kind of just passes on. It all mixes it together. Kind of like when you forget that you don't remember if you actually flush the toilet after you took a shit. Yeah, like that. Because <laughs> you just do it automatically. Yeah. You don't even think about it. <laughs> you go back to take a piss. You're like, oh, gross. No, you always remember, oh. but you can't remember that you remembered. Mm, I guess. That never happened to me. But anyway. It happens to me all the time at work. There is an alternate ending to this movie. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Is there? Oh, that's right. There's a post credit sequence. No, it's just a different ending. No, it's an oh, totally is alternate it? ending. Yeah, if you're if you're too evil, if you kill too many civilians during the quest of the game, do you do the whole thing up to the end fight? But you see it from Leo's point of view, and interesting. 
you beat the shit out of everybody and kill Daniel. And then when you come to with Dr. White, she's like, is that you, Leo? Or is that you, Daniel? And you're like, yeah. Oh, man. We should really get back to researching that bridge. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. And she's like, yeah, man, whatever you want. And then there's a classic mirror scene where you're Daniel looking in the mirror and Leo's looking back. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen it. That's all. That's all she wrote, boys. Well, how do you guys feel about it? Should we should we maybe ask each other how we feel about it? Yeah. I think we could talk about should it. Should we do rocks and papers? Who goes first? Between you two? I was just gonna have you lose. But... Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Oh, looks like it's scientists. Okay. Oh, there you go, scientist. All right. What do you want me to talk about? Why don't you talk about how much you want to play this? Mm. How much the story rocked your world? Mm. And why? It was worth 27 stars in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Was it a so great game ask. or was it the greatest game? <laughs> uh, would I play it? Nah, I'm not in this kind of thing. You're not into murder? Quick time murders? No, nah, not really. Unless it's God of War. Fair. Uh, the story worked for me. I mean, it's going to lose points to the gratuitous violence and pointless Lose slaughtering. points? <laughs> slaughtering. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it was... The story at its base, if you take out all the stupid killing, is not bad. I mean, it's sci-fi trying to implant another's consciousness in and mm. to be able to switch, and then it goes wrong. I mean, it's just like the mentoring candidate almost. So, ah, the story was... Oh, I'll, I'll keep it at that. It was okay. Fair. How many stars am I going to give it? Well, it's going to lose a couple for the stupid violence on it. That's not... Absolutely no reason. That has nothing to do with the plot. But it's still part of the story. Is it? Or is that gameplay? Both. Fair. This is an interesting line we're about to draw. <laughs> um, I guess if it's a quick time event, it's part of the story. Mm. But I mean, the whole story is you being a serial killer. That's true. Yeah. That one we can't argue. True. All right. Well, whatever. Spit it out. <laughs> All right. Let's let's bounce around in my head for a little bit and compare it to other games. That been, uh, I will give it. Baseline story, minus a couple points. I'll give it six stars. All right. Well, that's one six. I thought you'd give it. So yeah, I like the science aspect of it. Yeah, it was interesting. I didn't see that coming like, could... from the beginning. I was like... Well, oh. I kind of thought Leo was a separate conscience. I didn't think it was going to be like one they implanted on purpose. He thought it was just a schizo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, that kind of was a nice little shift for me on games we've done like this. True. But it probably would have got... It would easily gotten... Eight stars if it didn't have that much stupid killing in it, but it didn't. It got six. Anyway, what about you, Papa Scotch? Would you uh, play it? Would would you score the story? What? <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, would you play it? Did you like the story? And uh, how many stars are you going to give it? Thanks for asking. Um, would I play it? I don't think I'd play it just because I don't like stealth games. And yeah. from what I hear... Well, from the videos I watched that reviewed this, the controls weren't super great. So you kind of almost forget it's a stealth game. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you kind of do so many <laughs> yeah. violently. Always, and there's like gunfights too, mm-hmm. which aren't very stealth. But um, I probably wouldn't play it. It just feels a little bit dated at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the video, watching the video, did make me want to play. It. Like it, when I watched the video for the first Manhunt, I wanted to play that. Like that game seemed interesting, at least. Uh, this one didn't. You think the first one was more interesting? I think it was more interesting because... Because the way it was made, like, homemade video and shit. Yeah, yeah. It was played off as, like, some skeezy, disgusting reality show. Okay. And they had, like, all the VHS aesthetic and the whole weird editing and all the all the kills were, like, played through a grainy filter. And it had character, like it felt, and you had the director telling you what to do, like it was some psycho directing you, or he's gonna murder everyone, you know. Mm-hmm. And this one, while it had the science aspect, which also was interesting, I I didn't like it as much. It didn't feel like it was as cohesive. It, the only thing actually tying the two games together was just violently murdering people. Exactly, it's not a continuation of the first story. It True. doesn't have anything to do with that universe where. Well, it's supposed to be the same universe, but it doesn't feel like it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the other one, 
you could have just done another game where you recruited someone else for that show and made it fucking nuts, and it would have made more sense. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, what do I score it? I, I'm kind of. I don't know. This is tough because I don't want to give it better than Manhunt. You know what I mean? Because Manhunt, Fair, but I did like go high on Manhunt. Um, I'm gonna go with a seven. I think seven's appropriate. That's fair. Uh, there was a story. There was an attempt at a story. I liked the idea of the fact that a scientist is like doing the route of injecting himself with the cure to because no one would get approval to do it. Yeah. So it's like I'm gonna do it, and you know, worst case, my family's taken care of. He didn't think, you know, oh, I'll come back and murder my entire family. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think that's something you'd think of. It's like, oh, what this might kill me or. Whatever, but I wouldn't say it was for the most noble cause. It was to make, I don't know, interrogation proof assassins. Yeah, <laughs> not a cure for a virus, but I mean, still, it could have had non assassiny applications later. It probably would have helped with like Alzheimer's or or like maybe. how to block out or remove trauma. Maybe, yeah, kind of. Yeah, like- all right. I mean, they didn't. They didn't talk about him. Mean, that's just pure speculation on my part. But. <laughs> sure, sure, of course. I mean, I'm still sticking with a seven. Yeah, it's like a change that. Off. But uh, let's ma- ask the man of the hour, Sir Chumpslap. Mm-hmm. Would you play the game now? Did the story swing your cow? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it always talks about what cows. Score, always. What score <laughs> you'd give this sow? Uh, would I play it? No. I mean, only because it's too old. It looked like it would have been fun to play. If they remade it with disgusting graphics, I'd play it. <laughs> sure, sure. And if it was... Uh, it's so fucking gnarly right now if they redid it. I know. It'd be so gross. I was thinking about that, too. Like, I played The Last of Us 2, and some of those were fucking brutal. Yeah. I can't imagine if they tried real hard. I know. To just be brutal. Anyway. If the game was only murders. Right, yeah. Uh, how'd that story go for me? I thought it was all right. Kind of worked. It made sense. Except, well, I guess it makes sense that no cops were after you because you were all stealthy and this is the Grand Theft Auto universe. So you're pretty much easily just walking around. I think you murdered two cops, but they were on the take or something. Really? I, I just saw you murdering a bunch of cops. Yeah, I thought it was a bunch of cops too, but... They I thought murdered. they were just like the private security. There's a lot of men in black types you kill. Yeah, I didn't think they were oh, cops. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, maybe you did kill cops. Who knows? Maybe I missed that. But, yeah, I like the idea of a Pikmin bridge. Sounds pretty neat. I like to see that happen in real life. Somebody get on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they've tried. Yeah. But... I don't know, the whole, oh, my God, Leo wasn't real thing. I mean, that's, it was a little, I guess, what else are you going to (laughs) do? I mean, it's either a real guy's telling you to kill people or this fake guy's telling you to kill people. So, I thought it was all right. Uh, As for score, let's see here. You gave it six and you gave it seven. Well, don't base it on what we give it. Yeah, give it whatever you want. I don't know what I gave Manhunt 1, but I have the same scores written. So I'm going to give it an 8. All right. Because I think it was... Maybe it was just looked better than Manhunt 1. That's 21 total. You gave Manhunt 1 a 9, by the way. Well, there we go. Let's give it an 8, then. It works. But yeah, that gives us a final score of 21, which is... I'm trying to find something close. It is 5 higher than Thief... The Dark Project. Fair. Uh, five better than Saints Row. Three better than Dino Crisis 2. But one point less than Half-Life. How does it compare to The Last Manhunt? Probably close. It, it, the Last Manhunt, uh, you f- kind of tanked the score by giving it a one. <laughs> but uh, The uh, Last Manhunt, we gave a 22. Oh, wow. Man, I gave it one and you guys gave it 22. Yeah. All right. Because you're a hater of... Murder. <laughs> that's yeah, not, a, you, that's not a murder. slur that I'm not going to be ashamed to have. 
spread that around social media. Dr. Scientist hates murder. <laughs> I like that on a shirt. What a dick. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. He's such a... He hates it. He can't stand it. Oh, I know Christ. it's a bold position for me to take. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're going to get blown up on the socials if you come out with that kind of talk. But, all right, if we've got nothing else to say... No. We can go ahead and move into our uh, favorite segment of every week, which is Dr. Scientist's classic wrestling finish. Our long, long way. Ding, ding, ding. SummerSlam. WrestleMania. Uh, uh, Hell in a Cell. Royal Rumble. Hell in a Cell. <laughs> every week, we ask Dr. Scientist for a 100% guaranteed amazing wrestling finisher of the week, and he has never let us down ever, and it's not even possible. This week... Dr. Scientist, what do you got for us? Well, I got the perfect move. You need to break somebody's ankle in a fight. Oh. We're going to do the finisher of Kurt Angle, the, prof- the amateur wrestler turned professional wrestler, and his submission hold, the ankle lock. Isn't he a Olympic medalist? Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if it was gold, but he medaled. Yeah. Well, what's this ankleist thing? The ankleist? What is this ankle thing? Ankle lock. About? It's an ankle lock. It's just a regular <laughs> ankle lock. He's a he's a metalist ankler. Basically, you just grab like their toes and try and twist their ankle ways it's not supposed to go. And he kind of like drops to the ground and grapevines their leg too, so they can't really get out. And he just yeah, he just twists that ankle. I mean, it kind of explains itself. If you see it, you'll know it hurts. Oh damn, that does does hurt. That sounds brutal. Yeah, wait till you see it. Isn't Kurt Angle from Calgary, Alberta, Canada? Is that him? I don't know. Hmm. We'll, we'll figure it out in the <laughs> crevice. Yeah. Ooh. Might have been a big mistake on my part. But yes, if you need to break someone's <laughs> leg in a street fight, you can do this Kurt Angle-inspired move. The f- submission hold ankle lock. Make him tap out. Oh, uh, that'd be so There's a cool sad. video on YouTube, which I'm sure Papa Scotch will link to, of the top 10 Kurt Angle ankle locks. Kurt Angle ankle locks. Yeah, say that. <laughs> Kurt Angle ankle lock. Kurt Angle ankle lock. Kurt Angle ankle lock. <laughs> no, nope. Can't do it. But uh, apparently he's from America. Yeah, I thought he was American. But... Oh, who the hell am I thinking of? I don't know. There's a lot of wrestlers from Calgary. He's from Mount Lebanon, PA, motherfucker. Yeah. Told you it was the greatest to... state in the union. He went to Clarion University of Pennsylvania. Look at that. Good for him. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to take us to our favorite segment of every week, which is Chump Slaps. Would you rather? Royal Rumble. <laughs> We're just doing that. We're doing wrestling sounds like for the Would You Rather. Why not? <laughs> every week we ask Chump Slap a 100% guaranteed amazing awesome Would You Rather question, and he has to answer it and explain himself. This week... Sir Chompslap, we got a good one for you. Mm. Always oh, boy, do we ever. All right. I'm just going to get right into it because it's, it's too good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know what else you would say. <laughs> would you rather wear high heels or a belly shirt? <laughs> like all the time or just once? All the time. You're stuck with this decision for the foreseeable future. Oh, man. But you do know one day it will end. Could you imagine being at work with a belly shirt? I couldn't imagine being at work in high heels. Oh, that would hurt to stand on. I don't think I could legally be at work in a belly shirt. (laughs) (laughs) You'd have to wear an apron over it. (laughs) Could you imagine like frying up bacon with a belly shirt? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, oh, man. You have all these pock marks on your stomach. I don't fucking know. Pretty tall to begin with. I don't think heels are necessary. Yeah, you'd hit your head off the door when you're walking through. (laughs) Yeah. Plus, I'd probably twist an ankle so much. Well, that means you spend most of the, the time beginning. in, like, crutches. Mm. Good call. Yeah, you can't technicality your way out of this. You can't just break both your ankles and be in boots. Like, that's, <laughs> not, that's not how this works. I don't know, man. Uh, I'd have to say belly shirt. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to everyone that will look at me. But <laughs> be less awkward than looking at me in heels. <laughs> Well, I mean, they just get used to it. They just be like, oh, look, that's chump slap. You know, he wears belly shirts. That's what they would say. That's what he does. He wears belly shirts. It's old hat now. I don't know. Like, people wouldn't even bring it up. Like, they just see the cook in the back with an apron on and his belly hanging out the side. Yeah, that'd be just so gross. (laughs) Look at all these muffin tops here. I don't know. Maybe I will take the heels. 
Oh man, you can't walk on those. All I day. never go anywhere feet. anyway. Really. Yeah, but could you imagine standing the whole time in front of a cooking with heels on? How big do the heels have to be? I don't know. I'm not I can't, I can't imagine it's good for your back. Well, nothing is. My back is yeah. shot already. Maybe it's better <laughs> for it. Maybe maybe it'll knock stuff into place. Yeah, who knows? So you guys, you gotta try this high heel thing. <laughs> knock my sciatica right back in. My back's my like new. Was so fucked. This knocked it back. Oh my god, that is terrible. <laughs> no, you. I belly never shit. thought this question would be the hardest one you've ever had. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll take the heels. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm not comfortable. In a belly shirt, I think I could become comfortable in heels if I had to. <laughs> I don't think I don't know if they make a size twelve male heel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure there's something does. like that. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So you j- jam your foot in a size ten? Get out! Of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ! Well, let's say you know people had already had a whole bunch of fan art of you in a belly shirt. I'd still like to see it. Well, where would they even email those? Just to? send a belly shirt. <laughs> the smaller the they better. To, <laughs> they wanted to get our email to send us a belly shirt. Just, How would they reach out to us? Just sling one over to plottytime at gmail.com. I will personally read, respond, maybe even tell other people about that email. Perfect. And if they want to get to us faster on the socials with what they imagine Chump Slap looks like in a belly shirt and or high heels, how could they do that, Dr. Scientist? At Plotty Time on Instagram, Twitter, and Yik Yak. What is Yik Yak? It's the new social media controversial site. Oh, oh my God, it's a right wing shit. I don't, I assume so. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> I think it They'll was get it a one site time, guys. It came back. I don't know. It's, it's a thing. Don't All care. All right. It, it's not going to be a thing where their free speech platform is just spammed with Sonic the Hedgehog porn again. That's probably not going to happen <laughs> that again. That was beautiful. It is. Uh, if you want to really help us out, go to YouTube. Like and subscribe there. really helps us out. You can also buy our merch at PlottyTime.com. It's pretty dope shit, so get on it. Yeah, rate, leave a review. I don't know. Like I think, Thumbs up or thumbs down. It helps either way. Yeah, something helps. <laughs> smash that like button. Whatever, you yeah. know. Tell your friend to smash the like button. But that does it for us. Get neighbors. out there. Play some video games. Don't trust Dr. Scientist. We'll talk to you next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.